Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Winna Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Hong Kong logs another 1,347 COVID infections, while more elderly homes have been hit with the virus. Socialite Christina Lee passed away at age 98, as did horse trainer and rural leader Brian Khan. And Chelsea become world champions after beating Brazilian club Palmeiras in a pulsating FIFA Club World Cup final. More homes for the elderly have been hit by COVID as local cases rose by another 1,347 today. This came as health authorities consider special arrangements to allow infected children to stay with their family for treatment. Johanna Chan reports. There are now worrying signs the coronavirus could threaten the lives of children. Posthumous tests conducted on a four-year-old boy who passed away on Friday found that he was preliminary COVID positive. The latest case is a three-year-old girl who was fighting for her life. She was admitted to Prince of Wales Hospital yesterday before being transferred to the Children's Hospital. She has no medical history. While infections among children were rare in previous outbreaks, 4% of cases in the latest wave are four or younger. Authorities pointed out cases involving children are especially tricky as they require parents' supervision. The admissions of the pediatric case sometimes is a bit complicated with their family configurations. So rather than the true capacity of to be enhanced to help such pediatric patients, we also work out some logistics, including in the Penny Bay and also in um, the community treatment centre, to try to accommodate cases, confirmed cases, who is in a family cluster to be staying there. Lee added it was essential to divert patients away from overloading hospitals after Hong Kong logged another 1,347 cases. All but two were local infections. The city also saw 2,000 preliminary positive cases, while at least 10 more elderly homes were hit with the virus. A cleaner at Yunlong's Chengchong Care and Attention Home for the Aged tested positive while two centers under the Fu Hong Society in Tun Mun and Kun Tong saw outbreaks among staff and residents. Pak Lok Elderly Care Center in San Po Kong and New Life Psychiatric Rehabilitation Association in Tun Mun both logged preliminary cases. Three elderly citizens are also in critical condition. They are an 84-year-old man at Chen Kwan O Hospital, a 97-year-old man at Yan Chai Hospital and an 80-year-old man at United Hospital. The latter two have been vaccinated. Johanna Chan, HKIBC. The Consumer Council has called on the public not to resort to panic buying after supermarkets and grocers struggled to restock empty shelves. The government said it is working hard to ease supply chain disruptions between Hong Kong and the mainland. Here's Johanna Chan again. Fears of fresh food shortages continue after a number of truck drivers tested preliminary positive with COVID in the past two days. Authorities were forced to suspend operation of an interchange venue at the border, while other drivers deemed as close contacts were quarantined, causing supply chain disruptions. Speaking on a radio show, Consumer Council Chairman Paul Lam called on the public to remain rational when stocking up on food. He said if people keep buying more than what they need, it would only create panic in society. Lam added the public shouldn't worry about a lack of fresh food, as the government has pledged to eradicate the situation as soon as possible. A government spokesman said overnight that the SAR will work closely with the mainland to expedite food supply, adding that Shenzhen authorities have already set up temporary interchange venues but he admitted supply will still be affected because of the lack of drivers. It was a double whammy for supermarkets, which had trouble sourcing goods not just across the border, but also overseas due to prolonged flight disruptions. Consumer Council Chief Executive Jilly Wong noted prices at the city's two major supermarket chains went up in the past month. But total commodity prices at six supermarkets and chain stores were stable, rising 2 to 3 percent in the second half of last year. 
Wong advised shoppers who wish to save a few bucks to spend a little time comparing prices from different stores. Johanna Chan, HKIBC. A woman who went missing while hiking alone on Friday has been found dead. A search and rescue team gathered at Cape Collinson Road in, Chi in Chaiwan this morning to look for the woman. The 31-year-old had told her family on Friday she was going hiking alone in Eastern District. The fire services department received a call yesterday afternoon that she went missing and sent out a team to scour areas near Mount Parker and Cape Collinson. A government flying service helicopter eventually located her body near Big Wave Bay this afternoon. Christina Lee, wife of the late TVB co-founder Harold Lee, has died at the age of 98. Their three children confirmed her passing in a statement. They say she died peacefully yesterday. A private memorial and funeral will be held at a later date. Christina Lee took over much of her husband's business after his death in 1980, including his executive role at broadcaster TVB. She was well known for her love of traditional chi pao's, which she often wore to public events. Five-time champion horse trainer and politician Brian Khan has passed away at the age of 84. The rural village native was known for his brazen personality, which once brought him some trouble in the courts. News of Brian Khan's death was confirmed by his son Terry Khan today. He said his father had been battling long-term illnesses before he passed away last night, surrounded by loved ones. They like to call him the cocky trainer, or cyclic Khan, which means skillful Khan, with a play on his indigenous Cantonese accent. In his prime, the octogenarian was a superstar horse trainer, winning four straight trainers' premierships in the late 80s, before finishing off with a fifth in the 2000 to 2001 session. He was also a five-time Hong Kong Derby winner, and in 1988 took home the inaugural Hong Kong Cup. As a young man, Khan lived in England, where he worked at a restaurant near a race course. It was there where he first got in touch with people in the industry and took his first canter into the world of horses. Upon returning to Hong Kong in 1969, he joined the Jockey Club, where he eventually rose in ranks to become a horse trainer nearly a decade later. And his cockiness wasn't without reason, with over 800 Hong Kong winners under his name throughout his 25-year career. But his attempt to join politics was less successful. The legendary trainer put his name down for the Legislative Council elections in 1998 and again in 2000. He failed both times. He had a little more luck in the district councils and rural committees, though. His brazen personality also did not come without controversies. In 1988, he was fined by the court for indecently assaulting a Filipino domestic helper. Fifteen years after that, he was sentenced to a year behind bars for bribery during the Shangshui Rural Committee election. Khan spent his final years living a relatively quieter life before he passed on Saturday night at the age of 84. Overseas now, U.S. President Joe Biden has told his Russian counterpart that there will be swift and severe costs if he invades Ukraine, says the White House. This was revealed after Biden and President Vladimir Putin had a lengthy chat on the phone last night. It comes after U.S. and its allies are becoming increasingly on edge over perceived Russian preparations to invade Ukraine. That includes concentrating over 100,000 troops at the border and joint military drills with neighbor Belarus. In line with the U.S., countries like Australia, Israel and England have taken steps to withdraw staff from their embassies in Kiev. A key bridge linking Canada and the United States could be reopening soon, after some protesters dispersed peacefully following a standoff with police. But demonstrations against vaccine mandates are gaining momentum across Canada and around the world. Chloe Fung reports. 
while protests against the vaccine mandates and public health measures have entered a third weekend in Canada. A key bridge straddling the border with the United States could finally reopen soon. As police enforced an injunction to end the blockade at the Ambassador Bridge, some protesters dispersed peacefully. There had been fears of a violent clash. If they want to grab us and hook us up and take us away, so be it. There will be no, there will be no violence, there will be no resistance. I might tip my butt on the ground, they might have to drag me to the paddy wagon, but so be it. While the trucks slowly rolled off, some disgruntled demonstrators remained on the streets, carrying flags and banners to vent out their anger. You're holding a gun for no reason. We have a constitutional right to protest. It's a human right. And they're trying to deny it. They're get, trying to give us uh, some mischief nonsense. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had declared that the Ambassador Bridge and other border crossings could not remain closed, disrupting supply chains and industrial production. But demonstrations went on elsewhere in Canada, including capital Ottawa, where tensions built up. Thousands of people surrounded Parliament Hill, ignoring a state emergency the provincial government declared on Friday. Freedom of choice, vaccines, masks even. You know what, I just, yeah, for, we're doing this for the next generation as well too, right? The kids have to grow up. Um. Canadian police have made over two dozen arrests and issued around 2,600 fines over the recent protests. So-called Freedom Convoy protests have also drawn support from the U.S., France, Netherlands, Australia and New Zealand, where similar rallies were held to demand the lifting of vaccine restrictions. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. On to the weather now. Cool with one or two rain patches tomorrow, tomorrow morning, followed by sunny periods later. Temperatures will range between 14 and 18 degrees. The sun will peak out on Tuesday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. And that's our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 10. I'm Winna Wong. Thanks for watching. Good night.